Hello, this is the new PowerPoint controller board. And uh, as you can see from the meter, it's a, a very cloudy day. It's in the morning. It's only 79 watts. Uh, this is on a 500 watt array, and I've never seen more than, you know, much more than uh, 400 watts on it. So this is pretty good. If we switch into Direct Connect, you'll see you go from 82 watts down to just 16. So uh, that's a power boost. So this is the uh, board. I've finished the uh, schematic and uh, done the testing. I'm quite happy with it. This is what I've been recommending for the last three years. And uh, these are nice. You could get them for five bucks on eBay. And, you know, you got the fetch, you got the heat sink, you got the chip, you got a board. You know, what could be uh, better than that? But it's only limited to about 60 volts because of the FET. And the new production ones they have, they've changed the FET. It's a lower voltage FET. They've even changed what the IC is. Uh, you can still get the 8-pin, but uh, you never know quite what you're going to get. Even if you look at the picture and they say what you're going to get, you don't get it. Uh, and this is a little hard to modify. But, I mean, it's a cute little board. I mean, you know. For a nice finished product you know it was a great deal but everyone wants big systems so uh, let's go look at the schematic this is the finalized schematic as you can see it's only two eight pin chips this is an LM393 I bought uh, 50 of these for less than two bucks shipped so uh, you can screw up a whole bunch and blow these up really cheap as before we have a voltage divider which uh, takes whatever volts you have 60 volts 90 volts 120 volts and makes it something down reasonable that these comparator can look at this in yellow is only represent re only represents the uh, comparator inside the chip I just use it here for explanation in normal operation these two voltages are about the same. If you measure them with the meter, they'll look identical. Uh, this pin has to be a higher voltage than this one for the chip to work. And what we to do is determine the temperature. If you take a bunch of diodes in series, you have a forward voltage drop. And that forward voltage will change slightly with temperature and uh, what are solar panels, but a bunch of big diodes together and so we can create a temperature reference which is also a voltage reference and you can put five diodes in series inside of a little piece of uh, heat shrink tubing I recommend at least five minimum and uh, really uh, ten would be better get this voltage up as high as possible we filter it out a little bit the inputs filtered uh, this has a little 10k resistor that provides current so you can sense some voltage on it and uh, these two diodes are optional but if you include them it uh, makes the response of the whole system a, a third faster so uh, put them in uh, it runs on 15.6 volts that's regulated by this chip and you can use just two little dropping resistors only half watts will uh, run this at 60 volts. There are other resistances you can use for higher voltage. But it only draws about 5 or 6 milliamps. And so it's you're not dissipating a lot of power. It's nice to have this directly powered by the array and not have to worry about other power supplies. This IR2153 has a low voltage dropout. And so if the voltage drops too low and it's not enough to drive the FETs, it will just turn off protecting your FETs from going into a linear region where they'll uh, die. <laughs> so we have two outputs. This is normally a, a push-pull output. And so one FET turns on or the other FET turns on, never at the same time. You always have a minimum off time. And that allows you to put a uh, thermostat, a me standard mechanical AC thermostat, in series with the heating element. And you can't normally do that with the, when you're using just pure DC. But this allows the switching because it's pulsed. 
And this lower output here, this L5, uh, this is the priority. So like I have uh, 500 watts of panels. The first 200 watts will go just to this heater. In, uh, in my system down there, I have these two FETs tied together. But if you wanted to have a priority system with two heating elements, you could power just this heater. It would get the power first. And if there was any extra, you know, if you got over 300 watts or 350, you'd start putting power to the second heater. So this would be nice for, uh, you know, your upper element, and this would be good for the lower element. Now, in a, a later video, I'm going to be showing how to do another modification to uh, operate only from this lower output. And uh, then you can parallel up your FETs for a lower resistance. Uh, that's uh, handy if you're doing high voltage because once you get over 150 volts, the uh, FETs greatly increase in resistance and you have to run them in parallel. But there's not much to it. You supply power to it. I have two resistors here. For timing, uh, I want a 20K resistor, but if you're just buying a pack of resistors, everything in here is set up for 10K. Uh, for the uh, power supply, you can do a series parallel combination. So if you have three resistors in parallel with two in series, uh, then you can use those uh, quarter watt resistors, not have to buy anything extra. And again, you only have a timing capacitor here. And uh, you're buying diodes for this, so you might as well throw them in here. It's fairly simple. Uh, I have, uh, you can buy these little circuit boards. And, uh, you know, I'm experienced with this, so I can do them on one. But you can buy them this size, and if you have it this size, you can do a more logical layout. Uh, pin number one is always indicated by a, a dot, or it's at this notch. This is a bottom view, and this is a top view. And I did that because it makes a schematic layout in a more logical manner. But, you know, this is the way you'd lay it out the board. You know, one chip here, another chip there, in that orientation. Always use sockets. And sockets have this little notch here to remind you of where pin number one is. And buy more than one chip because, hey, even I screw up. But uh, these are DuPont connectors. You can buy these. They're really cheap. And they, you can get them with a male end on one side, female on the other. These are DuPont connectors. And uh, these connectors here are 2.5 millimeter pins. Uh, there's little notches in them. You can break them off any length you want. And uh, you can put them around the board. This is an easy way to... Uh, wire up to the pot or the FETs and uh, you know they're just handy makes it look neat but uh, you know get a big board and it'll be uh, much easier for you now let's look at the waveforms so this is a typical waveform here uh, this is your power supply this is uh, 60 volts and when the FET turns on it drops down to 0 volts so that's switching the heating element on and off. Now, this is the actual power supply. If you notice, it's quite flat up there that the voltage isn't really changing that much. It's only less than a volt. And down here, if you look, this is amplified just with the AC waveform. And uh, as you can see, the capacitor slowly charges up. When it reaches a high voltage, it turns on. The capacitor discharges. And then it uh, starts all over again. And this is the timing capacitor. Uh, the comparator has an open collector output, and it's shorting out the capacitor. Once you get below 2.5 volts, it turns everything off. Once it gets above about 5.3 volts, it allows to start conducting on the output. So this is like 5.3 volts. You can see it turns on. And uh, when the capacitor bank dro drops down in voltage a little bit, it turns off here and it resets. And it's that simple. But uh, this is what I suggest. 
uh, you know, building it rather than trying to modify those other boards, buying new FETs. The clearances on the traces are horrible, so you can't use them at higher voltage. It's too bad. that It could have been a nice product. But just building a board is not that hard. You know, it's only uh, two integrated circuits. It's only like a dozen parts. 